Do a Google search of the best standing desk and you will not see the need KDO1 on a list. Why is that? When you take a look at the standing desks mentioned on these lists, it appears the KDO1 hangs right there with them in terms of colors available, ease of assembly, build quality, and features. Now, let's figure out if this standing desk is truly slept on or if there is a reason the KDO1 is left off the best standing desk list for a reason. Let's start with how the package arrives. If you decide to own a KDO1, expect delivery in two packages. The standing desk frame is super heavy, weighing about 100 pounds, but you will see why shortly. The initial thing I did was take everything out of the box and out of the plastic packaging. I'll put the instructions on the screen so you can follow along with me and determine if they're clear or not. The first step calls out inserting the side brackets. This is simple enough, but I did discover I had a hard time because the corner of my frame arrived bent. But this was an easy fix I resolved with an adjustable wrench. If there was a manufacturing defect that would not allow me to assemble or use the frame, that's where the need warranty would kick in. I will say that Need was very thoughtful in their packaging by including cardboard corner protection and multiple cardboard and foam pieces to prevent damage to their product during shipping. But inevitably, shipping can cause damage sometimes. Now I want to be clear that I could have easily not include this minor issue in this video, but throughout my YouTube channel, you guys have thanked me for my refreshing honesty regarding my experience with a product, whether that's something I bought or something that was given by a brand. Let's continue that approach. Once I had both brackets inserted into the frame, the next step involved locking the columns into place. That was simple enough, but locking them into place confused me for a second, but it was my fault. One of my plates was already pressed down prior to locking the leg in place, which is why <laughs> I couldn't lock it in place. <laughs> so know that if you are breaking this table down for a move, you can lift the handles up to collapse the legs, and if you're assembling it, Make sure the handle is up, slide the legs into the locking joint, and press the handle down to lock that bad boy in place. Also, for added ease, need included a locking handle to make sure you don't pinch your hands with the clamp. The next step is to screw both feet in place. While I do that, and after chatting with need, they said that locking the collapsible legs in place is the feature they spent the most time on because they wanted to make it as easy as possible for customers to assemble. They heard the feedback from the market and how hard it can be to assemble desk frames. And as I go through the process myself, putting this desk together was easier than my autonomous standing desk. But back to the legs. You can see I used the machine screws and an Allen wrench to screw the feet in place. Also, the circular pads are adjustable so if your floor is uneven, unscrew it some to help level your desk. Now, I'm going to suggest something that's not in the instructions but should be common sense. Go get a quilt, a big towel, or something to lay your tabletop on so that you don't damage it or your floor. Once I had the table laid flat, I followed step 5 by placing the frame on and I adjusted the width of the frame to the desk size. Somehow I missed the step of tightening the screws on the frame, so for the clips you see in this video, they won't be tightened, but just know I did that later. Do better than me. Also, in terms of pre-drill holes in the desk, this is a critical step because if you line the desk up wrong, you will only see two holes lined up in the center beam as opposed to three. I made this mistake only to realize I need to pick the desk up and spin it 180 degrees. When it was lined up right, screwing in the three head screws was easy. The same with the wood screws, four on each side of the frame. Using the head screws to screw in the controller paddle is simple as well. By the way, the paddle clicks up and down so don't think that's something you have to tighten down somehow. Now this next step is what confused the heck out of me but I guess it shouldn't have. Step 7 said to slide the control box into the locking plate on the center of the beam. And honestly, I was like, huh? What are we calling the locking plate? Slide it in where? <laughs> and install this in which direction? Notice that the locking plate in the center has skinny rectangular cutouts. When flipping the control box over, the skinny rectangles on that line up with the plate. Call it a dumb moment, but it took me longer than it should have to realize this. I also noticed that the front page of the instruction manual shows the controller box in a larger picture for better understanding. Maybe that was just a coincidence. 
but I do think a revision of the instruction manual should include a zoom in picture of the control plate and alerting people to the guys on the back of the control box. You know, a for dummies version for people like me. <laughs> the picture of the controller inside the center beam is tiny in the instructions. I have my control box oriented so that it is facing the paddle outlet. This will allow a shorter travel path for the wire. Additionally, since my tabletop is 60 by 30 inches, I need to use the extension cable to plug in one of the cable legs. After I had all the cables plugged in, I did use the cable clips included to keep cables flush with the desk. Then all that was left was to flip this thing over. So let's talk about it. What makes a standing desk the best standing desk? I know the best is relative, but some desks out there can hold 300 pounds or more, and some can hold 170 pounds. Need says theirs is rated up to 275 pounds. I could sit on this and test that, but I ain't trying to have this body on camera like that. <laughs> My favorite feature on this desk is a collision sensor that will prevent the desk from crushing something underneath. For example, I have an Alex drawer off to the side of the table, but also under the table. So when I try to lower the desk to the lowest setting, it detects the drawer and returns to a safe height. Now, I do like to see what people are saying on Reddit and it appears the most common asked question is the height ranges on standing desks. The website listed as 24.5 inches to 50 inches, which is basically the same range as the fully standing desk that is on almost every best list. I will say that I do enjoy lifting the paddle up or down to adjust the height as opposed to pressing and holding a button. It's just a better user experience overall. Now, I've been trying to think of things that might give you, the buyer, pause in buying this desk. I would say the price, but if you're looking for a 60 by 30 inch bamboo tabletop with the frame, Need has that less than a fully Jarvis. When it comes to warranties, Need offers five years, but some competitors offer seven and 10 years. And this Need KDO1 has two memory presets when similar competitors offer four. But given everything you've seen in this video, including the build quality and the strength of the motor, I think the KDO1 deserves to be on these best standing desk lists.